Most of us at some level believe we possess some measure of integrity. What is uncertain, however, is the quality of the integrity that we possess. Is it mediocre? Is it substandard? Was it enough? How do we know? In this video, I'm going to talk about what good quality integrity looks like, some of the components that go into good quality integrity, and finally, at the end of the video, stick around because I'm going to talk about the key ingredients that you need to ensure you have good quality integrity. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in. I believe that integrity is one of the most valuable traits we possess as humans. It's the very heart, if you will, of trust, uh, of honesty, of respect with each other. At the very heart of it, integrity for me is internal to external. What I mean by that is this, the internal values that we have expressed consistently in external actions is what makes up the bedrock of integrity. Now, what makes integrity have the promotion or the graduation to good quality integrity is doing this process consistently over a span of time, over a lengthy span of time. The more we're consistent in our values and acting out those values in a way that reflects what we really believe, then it translates to good quality integrity. This does not happen in a moment. Practicing good quality in integrity is really a commitment of a lifetime. We don't just act one, we do, we do, we, I guess one way of saying it is we don't do one act of integrity and figure that we have it. We keep on doing it over time, consistently making this a habit and a pattern. This is a lifelong process and it requires deep self-reflection. It requires recognizing what one's core values are. And finally, it also um, uh, necessitates one's committing to following through practically on what these values are and how one wants to live by them. Now let's talk a little bit about some of the developments that one can apply themselves to, to contributing to what good quality integrity looks like. The first spot for practicing good quality integrity consistently over time is honesty. Honesty with yourself. Honesty with yourself in three specific ways. First of all, honesty about your strengths and about your weaknesses. Secondly, honesty about your core values and principles or convictions. And then thirdly, honesty about your actions and the way you're following through in real life. Now, firstly, on this uh, first sub point on honesty. It's honesty about your strengths and weaknesses. This is where it's really helpful to spend some time on your own and do some deep reflection, wondering which areas am I really good at? What parts about myself am I like knocking it out of the park? And then what are the areas of challenge that I perceive or see myself when I consider where my frame is at currently and in, in this moment? So let me give you an example as an added bonus to this video of one of the most painful lessons I had to learn in my life and now had to do with my infidelity and how I cheated on my wife and how it got to that point. For me, that was like the, the, the latter stage of what had happened many years before. But many years before, it started off with me being dishonest with myself dishonest with myself when walking along a path one day as a youngster i came across some pornography stashed away in the bushes and when i discovered it there was two major responses that i had internally one was excitement saying wow i've never seen the female form this is really intriguing and exciting and i'm super curious and then secondly was shame shame because i knew in my religious context that i've been brought up in this is a very shameful thing i should not be participating in this and so i had to try and repress those desires and feelings but i couldn't do that the true intention of what i wanted to experience internally was i wanted to explore more and discover more but i had to shut that down i didn't feel safe to talk to, to talk to anyone in my community because the community that i was in with it just struggled in talking about this topic here. It was a very taboo subject. And as a result, I was, I found myself being driven into isolation. And so for me, it began with a, 
commitments to dishonesty. And so if I had had a chance to reflect at that time, I would have sat myself down and said, well, here are some strengths that I see. I'm extremely respectful and kind to everyone around me to the extent that I have wonderful connections with all those around me. However, part of the weakness would be that I was dishonest because I could not speak what my heart really desired to talk about or express or feel or explore or understand. I could not feel uh, safe in communicating that and so I was dishonest while giving a presentation of saying, yeah, I'm not interested in things I'm not supposed to be interested in. I was truly interested in them and so there was one of the ways I could have been honest with myself at that time with where I was really at. I could not speak honestly. I started practicing dishonest engagement and communication. Now that moves to the second point, being honest about the values and the core beliefs that I had. At that time, I was brought up with an externally taught set of values that I worked really hard to align with, but I couldn't quite align with it. I couldn't quite uh, match what it demanded from me. Case in point, here I was discovering pornography for the first time. It was extremely exciting and I wanted to be curious and understand more, but I couldn't. So my value of truly trying to understand and to explore was suppressed. And I tried to align with a different set of values outside of my own that I thought, okay, this is what I have to prioritize and highlight and put mine on hold, put mine in repression. And so that was one of the things I could have identified at that time if I was being honest with myself, aligning with the values that were not my own, aligning with the values externally to me that I didn't really find a frame of reference that it spoke to me and repressing my own values. And then thirdly, of course, is the actions. The actions that ensued from this, the way I continued my exploration in secret, in hiding, in isolation. I couldn't actually talk to others about them and what I was discovering or learning or having still to be explained or uh, for understanding. I couldn't express any of those. So I could have expressed honesty by way of saying, hmm, I do not feel like I am being honest in the way that I am expressing what I truly want to know and experience and feel. And as a result, I was communicating something else saying, oh yeah, I don't struggle with this. It's not allowed, so I'm not doing it. And so I couldn't actually be honest about the actions that I was taking in, in, in secret while behaving a different way in public. And one of the ways that people understand uh, um, integrity is it's who you are when no one's watching. And if that lines up with when no one's watching and when they're watching, that's what we're really aiming for. So that's the first element in or uh, d development that one can take in pursuing what good quality integrity looks like. It looks like honesty with one's strengths and one's weaknesses, honesty with one's core values and beliefs, and honesty with the way one's behaviors and actions align with those values and beliefs. Let's move on to the second one. The second element that contributes towards good quality integrity is the practice of self-discipline. This is where you align your actions with your values. Another way of saying this is that you, you do what you say you will do. In my example that I gave earlier, um, I didn't do this. <laughs> I didn't do this and it ensued in a terrible, catastrophic way that had great consequential uh, results that were sad, that were um, painful. But let me ex uh, explain a little bit more. When my community of faith espoused an idea of how we were going to deal with sexual matters. For example, you don't have sex until you're married. You don't express interest there until you are married. That was what I tried to align myself with. I tried to cut that part off. But when I discovered pornography and started consuming it, internally, my curiosity was piqued. I was interested. That was the true uh, expression of what my core value was, was to, uh, to explore what I found curious and interesting. But I tried to repress that and I tried to adopt an external set of standards that didn't quite align. And therein is where my hypocrisy started to grow, where I was doing something that I said I wasn't going to do 
because I really wanted to experience and explore it. The truth, however, would have be, been me practicing self-discipline. In this case, it would have been done in a healthy way whereby I could have courageously said to my community, I'm actually interested in this. I want to talk about this. I want to understand this better. I want to see where my reference point comes in relation to this. That would have been the, the way of self-discipline for me. Now, self-discipline takes courage. It takes a lot of hard work. You're just not handed on a platter the, the outcome that you desire. You have to put a lot of hard work into it. And for me, this would have entailed communicating and expressing and asking and engaging uh, communicatively on the things that I was really interested in. However, I was not. And as a result of me not doing so at that time, I continued to live inconsistently. And as I did that over the years, I got better and better at it in hiding what I was truly interested in in hiding what my true convictions and values were. My true convictions and values never aligned with the actions that I was doing. Now, that I was aligned in other ways. I was still kind and courteous and that was really who I was. But in this realm here, I was giving indications dishonestly that I was disinterested when I really was interested. And that curiosity that I had that was a core value of mine, I repressed and I could not express. And this is what this practice of self-discipline could do when we apply it in our current context. How are we with self-discipline? Are we applying self-discipline so that our values are fleshing out into the actions that we want to um, have them express themselves in? Or are we believing something but doing something different and hence not applying self-discipline and following through on what those core values are um, practically? Let's move on to the third component of what contributes towards uh, good quality integrity. This third element that, that contributes towards good quality integrity is a really scary one for most, but it's so critical. It takes courage to apply this one. This element is being accountable for our actions, being accountable for our actions, taking responsibility for the choices that we've been making, um, showing honesty in displaying our messiness and how we want to make amends for the mess that we've made. And this is made even more difficult because usually it comes at great personal cost. There is going to be some reckoning when we take accountability, when we step up and say, I am responsible for X, Y, and Z. But this is so critical for pursuing and experiencing what great um, quality integrity looks like. In my case, um, this finally came to the point where I got married and uh, I continued with the patterns of behavior that I've been doing for so many years before I got married. Patterns of behavior that I knew would hurt my wife and my family and my friends and my community. But I kept going through them because this is what I practiced. And as I was breaking faith, as I was breaking trust with her, as I was cheating on her, um, yeah, there, there came a point when I realized I'd gone so far off where I once had hoped to be. And the only way to experience what good quality integrity looked like was for me to press that personal integrity reset button. That was a painful thing to do, but I had to be accountable for all that I had done. I had to speak the truth about it all. I had to come clean. I had to take responsibility for my actions, not in a small measure saying, oh, it's just a small thing that I did. I tried that before and it did not work. I had to apply the full measure of accountability to where I'd been and what I'd done painful as that it was going to be. This is going to ha come a great personal cost. I was preparing, dear friends, for a good decade where no one would want anything to do with me, where I would be ostracized from my community, where I would have no connection socially. This is a very scary thing to face, but I was still driven to take accountability despite the great personal cost my actions would, uh, would, would have cost me. And it involves me sitting down with my ex and being honest about all the ways that I had hurt her and all the things that I'd done to break trust with her. 
It was a very extre- it was extremely painful. It was extremely sad. It was very rupturing. It caused tremendous emotional damage for her, for our kids. Talking to the kids was also really difficult. Talking to the community that I was a part of was extremely difficult, especially given that I was one of their leaders as a pastor, which increased that level of hypocrisy in which I had come to live in. But it just shows you how long I'd facilitated for this for, how much in isolation I'd driven myself, and how much I needed to take accountability for. And in my reference point, my conviction now was as far as my influence had gone so far would my accountability need to go my disclosure of what i'd done and how it was really affecting so many adversely at a deep level so this is not for the faint of heart this is where the rubber meets the road and it gets it gets real here and the cost can be significant. It can be weighty. It can be devastating. But this is the cost for experiencing what good quality integrity looks like. The alternative is something that others have asked me, saying, couldn't you just have been quiet about it all and just try to turn a new leaf? I said no, because I would still know in my mind, and my mind would still find that experience of integrity elusive. The only way to experience good quality integrity is by applying ourselves rigorously to this process of being accountable for our actions and choices that we've been making, taking ownership from them and pursuing how to make amends for the wrongs that we have done. It's critical. It is imperative. It is non-negotiable. We can't skip this step as we progress towards what good quality integrity looks like. But let's hasten on to our final point in considering what good quality integrity demands from us. The final element that builds towards good quality integrity is building trust with those around us. I once argued that integrity is meaningless if we were the only person in the world because if we were the only person in the world, we wouldn't have to use language that says I should or I shouldn't. I should be quiet when I wake up so I don't wake up my roommates or I should um, uh, let others go before me. Like Integrity only makes sense if we live in the context of others around us in community. This is where we have to be aware of what our actions and our commitments and our values Um, look like, especially in the way that they impact those around us. And it gives us some ways of framing what we should or shouldn't be doing. So building trust is one of those key components, building trust with those around us that contributes towards what good quality integrity looks like. This enables us to grow in being reliable and being consistent and being dependable. As we apply ourselves to this last element, it enables our perception of integrity to grow, especially with those around us, so that we can have the currency to be able to interact and and engage from a place of goodwill. Now, my example that I've been sharing with you so far, um, I for years had not been interacting honestly with those around me. In fact, I'd been spinning a web to try and keep one side of my life, my true convictions hidden because I was afraid of others ever learning about what those were at the cost of me being cut off and then giving a different representation of how I really was uh, externally to others that didn't match the truth. I was being dishonest. I was not building integrity with them, even though they believed what I had been telling them because I was very compelling. And this all came to a head when I realized I need to be accountable for my actions and a huge part of this ensues by me speaking the truth. Now in my case, as I spoke the truth to all those that had been impacted as far as my influence had gone, the result was that I did not accrue more trust. In fact, I plummeted in trust with them. I had been lying to them for so long that now they were saying, We don't know if we can believe you. But this was a first point. This was a starting place for me to begin this new journey that I was committing myself to of rigorous honesty. I was no longer going to go back and facilitate dishonesty or lies. I was now committed to telling the truth. 
And as I started this process with my wife at the time, telling her the truth of how I had been cheating on her, how, how I had been dishonest with her, how I had um, not been faithful to her, she lost trust in me. And I hurt her deeply. And it may be a very, very long time before she ever considers trusting me again. And I don't blame her. There are so many that I hurt because of my dishonesty. So many who may never believe or trust in what I say again. That's part of the cost of pursuing good quality integrity. You see, that was the beginning point for me and my practice of pursuing integrity at that point was just the beginning. It wasn't quite good quality, but I was pursuing good quality integrity because now I didn't want to experience dishonesty again. Now I wanted to progress and grow in what this integrity looks like. And over time, as I continue to build in these patterns uh, and these elements that I've been covering so far, as I continue pursuing them, even in this truth telling, over time, I knew that my integrity or my expression of integrity would become good quality, good quality integrity. But it was going to take some time. In the meantime, those who I was communicating to honestly and truthfully saying, here's how I've broken trust with you all. My, tr my trust capital plummeted. I became bankrupt in trust. Uh, recently, it was just yesterday, actually, I came up with this new quote and I found it really helpful. I said, integrity is the bank in which we deposit trust. Dishonest acts are the robbers that come and rob that trust from the bank. How rich are you is the question I asked afterwards. And in my case, after practicing dishonesty for years, I didn't have very much trust. People. People had given me their trust, but now that I show them that I've been dishonest all along, that trust diminished very quickly. Those dishonest acts robbed me of trust with them. And so here I was starting all over again. Now here's me looking back at this moment back then and the time in between. And over those years, I've been able to keep practicing being honest and truthful with those around me consistently. And this has enabled me to grow in being reliable. It's enabled me to grow in dependability and my credibility and 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 um, and, and dependability has been consistent over this time. But this has taken time for me to get to this point where now I believe I am experiencing what good quality integrity looks like. Now, I know that it's good quality integrity because I've heard reports from those around me that have seen me consistent over some time. But there are many who will never trust me again. There are many who are cynical when they think about me and my expressions of integrity. This is part of the cost for what I sowed once upon a time for many years and how I broke trust. But just because others don't believe in my expression of integrity does not mean it doesn't have good quality. Good quality integrity accrues as you invest in it over time. Let's hasten on to the final key element that enables you to experience what this good quality integrity looks like. Stick with me as I get to it here. Practicing some of the elements we've just talked about lends greatly towards one's investment in integrity. Now, the difference between starting off in one's journey of pursuing integrity and experiencing good quality integrity is time and consistency. Consistency being the big word over time. When one begins their journey of practicing integrity, just one day of practicing integrity is a great start, but it is not enough to know that you are gaining and staying in it. Remember earlier we said that practicing good quality integrity is really a lifelong process. To that end, we never arrive. We continue pursuing it day in, day out, over and over again. And the more we do so with consistency, the more we grow in dependability, the more we grow in credibility, the more we grow in being reliable. Uh, these are really important components and, and building blocks towards what good quality integrity could look like.
Life on a daily basis gives us plenty of opportunities to practice what integrity looks like. There are many scenarios in the day whereby we are being faced with the option of choosing. Are we going to act in a way that aligns with what our core beliefs are? Or are we going to act otherwise in a, than the way that we actually believe? It's really important to pursue aligning the internal with the external, the way we really believe coming out in the way that our actions are also uh, ensuing. And so along those lines, it is impossible. Listen carefully, friends. It is impossible for us to pretend to have good quality integrity. It's impossible. It's kind of like showing up at a marathon and not having trained at all for it. When we show up and we think we can finish that marathon without any practice, it's impossible. You're not going to make it. You could make it maybe 100 yards sprinting, but you can't make it like 42 plus kilometers running long distance that way without conditioning yourself over time. In the same way, it is not possible to pretend your way through this. Now, it is possible you could fool yourself, but you can't actually experience the real, tangible, good quality integrity that comes by being consistent in practicing and aligning with your values internally, externally, by being honest about who you are and what your strengths are and where your area, uh, what your core beliefs are, by practicing self-discipline, by being accountable for your actions and, and choices that you make, and even by building trust with those around you. These things you can't fake over the long haul. It's important for you to know that the true uh, nature of integrity is only experienced when we apply ourselves to this hard work of aligning internal with external. And this is what enables us to, over time, start seeing an appraisal in the level of integrity we enjoy. We start off right here and as we go through these bumpy seasons in learning how to be individuals with integrity and individuals who are acting with consistency internally and externally, as we do this over time we start seeing that that level of integrity we experience grows into what good quality integrity looks like. Friends, this is really possible for you. It's like it's like um, a fine aged wine. Um, the older I heard it is, the better. And so in the same way, the more you apply yourselves with consistency in this realm towards good quality integrity, the more you're able to savor something sweeter, something more satisfying that fills your cup, that fills your soul with good things. This is possible, but it's not by any means easy. It's not by any means easy because it's going to take some internal wrestling. It's going to take some courageous looking in the mirror and seeing what is actually there. It's going to take some hopeful investments from others around you to encourage and inspire you along the way. And that's why I have created this video is because I want to inspire you towards what that could look like. I would love to see you experiencing not just um, a starting point of integrity that has its starts and stops and you're not getting any momentum. I want you to, to really experience what good quality integrity looks like. And that comes by applying yourself to honesty with yourself first and foremost. That's a really critical starting place. Honesty in acknowledging where you presently are, what your current set of values are, and how you want to follow through in living those values in your life. That I believe is possible. If this is resonating with you, I would love to hear from you. Drop me a comment down below, send me a message, follow and subscribe if you haven't already done so because my goal is to inspire more uh, commitments to what integrity could look like, good quality integrity, and how one can experience the liberating effects of it. Once you come to this side here and you've experienced it for a consistency over years, how can I describe the freedom that I feel, the, the way that I can face the world without any fear? Here I'm able to talk about my very personal um, lessons that were painful that I hope no one would ever find out. Here I am talking about them with you, with the world, and I don't feel any sense of shame. I feel a sense of release because I am not who I once was. Because I've pursued integrity, I've grown into something different. And now the, the flavor of integrity that I enjoy is this good quality integrity. I hope that you will also have the same desire to experience it. 
But if you haven't already done so, like I say, please subscribe, follow along. And in the next video, I'm going to contrast what good quality integrity looks like against bad quality integrity, the kind of integrity you do not want to experience. So I hope you'll, I will see you in that next video, but thanks for watching. I hope to see you soon. Bye for now.